What's going on, world? You are now rocking with the Now or Never podcast, the intersection of business, faith, and culture. This week's guest, we have Robert Larmore of uh, Jive Live Entertainment, and I know he's going to be talking about some of the new things that he's going to be doing in 2021. Robert, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you, Bobby. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, dude, it's been a, it's been a crazy uh, 2020, man. How, how, how are you hanging in there? To say the least, yeah, I mean, it's been a, a roller coaster emotionally, physically, business, faith, family, all the above. Kind of all, in all aspects of your life? Could you say, uh, would, would it be safe to say that it's kind of all went crazy this year? How would you, how would you <laughs> define it? That's, that's, the, that's the question. I don't even know where to start, but yeah, I mean, kicking off the beginning of the year, I mean, obviously every, everyone had some expectations of what 2020 was supposed to be like. Now we're living in what, we're about to go into 2021. And, my, my goodness. Um, it's, been, it's been a crazy year. So before we get into, you know, and I appreciate you, you kind of just prefacing that what kind of a year it's been, but before we get into, you know, where we're at now, where we're headed, um, I would like to introduce the people to, to Robert, the person. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm fortunate and blessed enough to be a really close friend of yours. and. You know, I know a lot about your upbringing and just kind of the trajectory over the last yeah, 20 years in your life. But prior to uh, getting into the event business, prior to becoming a, a father, what was your upbringing like? What, you know, what was that experience growing up for you? Um, a lot of, I guess, who I am today as a person, a lot of the, the way I think mentality wise, business wise, just just as a person has a lot to do with how I was brought up with my mom and my dad, you know. Um, my, my mom and my dad, my biological dad, James, <clears throat> got a divorce when I was, I think, eight or nine. I, I, I don't remember the exact, exact age. And then my dad, um, David, who you, who you know, um, Great man. Yeah. Uh, adopted me when I was about, I think, 10 or so, 10 and 11. Um, give or take a couple years, it's been a while. Um, and going through that process and just growing up with um, my two dads, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, and um, learn a lot through it just as a person, as an individual. Um, and I guess I think when I was 13 or so, uh, my parents. Um, we moved from Oceanside, California, where I'm from. They moved us up to Seattle. Um, so David was in Oceanside. Is that was that, yeah. where they, that where they met? My parents met in Oceanside. Okay. Yeah. Is that so that was that's where you grew up. You grew basically up, up till 13ish. 13 or so. Okay. Born and raised in Oceanside, California, and um, and then spent about seven or so years up in Seattle, and then when I was I think 19, I came back down to to California. What was um, that? What was that? Just stop you real quick. What was that experience like going from Oceanside to Seattle? Very different places. Yeah. How did how did that affect? Like, um, to kind of give you the backstory of it. I think um, my par- my parents had sold their house, and they just wanted to start a new life. Yeah. You know, so there was some stuff going on, just life, family, and they're like, you know, we just want to we want to start over, yeah. start something new. I think they were in the thirties. Yeah. And it kind of blows my mind a little bit to think about it, because I mean, I wasn't in my 30s not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, to take, um, you know, a kid my age, I'm thinking about my boys, 10, 14, and starting over again in a whole other city and state. Um, it's not something that you would normally do or traditionally do. But my parents, if you know my parents, are not very a traditional your parents type. Parents ain't traditional, bro. <laughs> I love your parents, um, but they're not. <laughs> so when we were 13, um, they sold everything, and the few bucks that they'd have in their pocket, we loaded up a moving truck, towed the vehicle that we did have, and moved on up to Washington. And um, we didn't know where we were going. Neither of them had jobs planned out, or they just knew they wanted to get up to Washington. And um, driving up the coast, um, the moment we hit the border of Portland, or I'm sorry, Oregon and Washington, um, they began to stop at all the different cities and towns yeah. and to see where they wanted to land up, you know. And all we had was, I think they had Thomas guides back then. So yeah, I mean, no under, <laughs> under the sea. <laughs> um, so we would stop in every little town, pull over a gas station, and 
you know, we would find um, a hotel or whatever in each of those little pockets, and then we would explore the city that next morning, and then we would go from town to town, and if we did, and then uh, until we got up to Bellingham, Washington, and in each town that we hit, we're like, mm, this is probably not it. Mm, this is probably not the city that we. And we didn't really know where we were going. We know we were just going up north. You know, we were running out of room because the next this town over was Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, don't know, I found a coupon to a hotel uh, one, at one gas station stop. And I said, hey, let's go check out this town. Let's go to stay at this hotel. We stayed there. The next morning we went and explored the city. And they were like, this is it. And How long was that? How long was that trek? Um, town to town? I don't know. I mean, it took us... This is when I was like 13, so I mean it's been a while ago, but it was a multi-day process. Of course, yeah. Um, going from town to town. Um, so then after we landed on Bellingham, Washington, we took the the moving truck. Um, we found a storage spot, unloaded everything, and then um, parents didn't have a place to live. They didn't have any jobs. So what we did is we had a, a pickup truck that had like a camper shell. It was all carpeted and everything, and we just camped out at the rest stops for a couple weeks and just lived out of our car. Yeah. Um, they enrolled me in middle school. I think it was in eighth grade at the time, and um, and yeah, I mean, we, I just remember taking baths inside the rest stop. They would take, drop me off at school. They would go look for work. My mom got a job at Kmart. My dad got a job, I think, at an assembly line making uh, CD cases. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, he went back to school, and you know, so on and so forth. The rest is history. So, going back to your original question, I think a lot of that. Um, formed my mentality of not uh, being afraid of doing certain things. You know, I took that when I came back down to California. It kind of, kind of just I mirrored that same um, situation. You know, I I was just out of high school, went to college for a little bit, and I was working for a company. Saved up a few bucks, moved down here with a friend, and the same thing. We just loaded up a truck, her car. We had a place to live, but we didn't have a job or anything like that. So we, 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 when we got here, we went looking for work and um, starting all over again, you yeah. know. And so um, it was just having that mentality of um, not being afraid to do something, fail or not fail, um, which I apply now to just business and life in general. So One thing you mentioned, and, and um, it stuck out to me because it, it really shows the testament of who your parents are. So. What you said was like you found a coupon in in a in like a book or a directory and you to, of a place to stay. Um, what I notice even now in your older age and, and your relationship with your parents, I don't know if you can speak to it when you were growing up, but um, what it seems like is they included you in a lot of the decision making or a part of their their life because mm-hmm. I know my parents they probably would question where I you know would want to stay, mm-hmm. but. It just seems that they are very invested in you from from a very early age. I think they are that with all of our siblings, my brother and my sister. Yeah. Um, it doesn't a day doesn't go by without us talking on the phone. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, my brother, my sister, all of us. You know, it's just over the years. I mean, there is a period. Don't get me wrong. There is a period of our life when we're left living up in Washington, and my brothers were down here, or my brother and my sister, where um, our family didn't talk for at least. 10 or so years like everyone lived their own life yeah um there was no communication you know we were going through our own family battles and drama of course and then we came to realize that um life's just too damn short you know so i don't know over the over the past several years we've been able, our relationship's been um been mending and been healing and having you know and enjoying just enjoying life you know and, yeah we're closer now than we have ever been on on just in general, you know, and that's the reason why we're so close. You know? that's, that's beautiful, and, I, and it's something to be admired, um, just being on the outside as, as your friend, mm-hmm. you know, witnessing that. It's like that's, that's pretty cool because not a lot of people have that in their older ages because, to your point, you know, family drama lingers a little bit, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like, you know, it, it's either you, either you do or you don't, you know what I mean? And, yeah. So... Take, so you take take me here. You go you go through you go through um, coming to California, mm-hmm. and you know you said you had saved a couple bucks. You came down here with a few friends. Um, this was post college, or during yeah. college. Actually, I didn't even finish college. Just came down to California. Just came down to California. I had plans to move to New York. I had some friends who 
um, who I work with up in Seattle. They moved out there, and I was just I was just exploring life, and you know, didn't I would think I was 19 at the time, and um, I was just exploring life, you know. And I came down here for a little bit. I had plans to um, head over to New York, and then I hooked up with my sister, who was down here. She was going to church. I started going to church with her. I got locked in. That's how I think you yeah. and I met. Yeah. Um, and then. Yeah, so we, yeah. we met at, we met at a, uh, a semi-small church, you know, medium-sized church. It was New Harvest where we met. Um, and I know faith is an active thing that, that plays out in your life even now. Um, in those formative years of coming to faith or coming to God and mm-hmm. your relationship with Jesus, how has that, you know, shaped you now as a father? Um, and then just, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about your career and how that played out. Mm-hmm. But what is the role that faith plays in your life right now and how has it you know gotten you there i think it is established the foundation you know um i didn't really grow up in a faith-based home or a church or anything like that um that's not how we we're brought up you know and i didn't come to know god or know about just um faith in general until i think i was 19 20 years old um but now, fast forward through these past, I don't know, 20 or so years, it's just been the foundation of just principles, character, uh, mentality, you know, pl- applying that to just business life, um, work life, family, you know, raising two boys, you know. And I think over the years, um, perceptions and mentality, not, not merely mentalities, but perception of um, church and God has changed and developed and redeveloped over the years. Yeah. Um, God hasn't changed, obviously. Um, but I think us as people, as, as humans, um, have a different understanding, whether yeah. better or not better. I mean, just a different perspective of who God is, who they are to them as an individual, Correct. you know, as opposed to what it should be or what people... I don't know what you call it. I don't want to, you know, n- not what people tell you it should be. You know what I mean? But as opposed to just your own relationship with God and um, having an understanding just for yourself, you know, and I'm able to now, um, I think that's just been the foundation of um, uh, where I'm at today. Correct. You know, so, you you know, you're saying what I'm what I'm getting out of that is that there was a maturity level that came out of you know, the many years in faith. Correct. Um, would it be safe to say that it came to, you came to a certain point in your life where you had to separate what, what church meant to you versus what God meant to you? Is it something, something along those lines? Definitely, yeah. I think it's two different things. Yeah. You know, at first, um, not knowing better um, or knowing the difference of it, just had this mentality of just, as um, long as you're in church, as long as you're involved in church, um, within the four walls of church, um, you're good, you know. Um, then as you begin to grow and understand um, that God is beyond just the four walls, you know. Um, so without getting into a lot of the of course. politics yeah, of it. Of course, it, we can go uh, politics and church all day. You know? come to realize that uh, today... Um, I just have a different perspective of uh, faith, religion, God, you know, um, so. So, you know, it's beautiful to see that that transition. I think we've all, as you get older, you kind of, your own faith journey, your own faith walk. Mm-hmm. Um, some, and, and I just want to preface this, I don't think all churches are bad. I don't think you think that either. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it's how we apply our church activity to our faith and our belief system sometimes gets blurred. Mm -hmm. And depending on if you go to a healthy church and if you don't go to a healthy church, um, that can get very confusing Mm -hmm. and that can become, you know, we create these these idols Mm -hmm. in Christianity, but sometimes it's, it's not even sometimes, but a lot of times um, that's not a true relationship that keeps us grounded. And our true relationship that keeps us grounded, you know, which I've seen in your life has been your relationship with God hasn't mm-hmm. been pretty, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you could say that, you know. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, it's definitely been a roller coaster. Um, more so, probably 
my fault than God's. <laughs> We're human, right? We, we make dumb decisions. So, but it's just, um, just the process, I guess. Yeah. So, you know, I, well, one of the things that I did notice it, with your faith walk, your faith journey, um, is how you applied it to your career and the event world. And um, part of our backstory is we, we obviously, we met at church, but mm -hmm. then um, we got into the event industry, and I've seen your trajectory from the jump. Mm -hmm. um, from selling cell phones at T-Mobile to porta potties to, I'll let I'll let you speak to it. Yeah. But um, bring us up to speed on how that all started for you and where you're at now. I think a lot of, I think this is in in every story and everyone's life, just in general. Like a lot of what they um, go through throughout different phases of their personal life, work life has a lot to do with what's going on today in their own personal lives. Um, you know, I was 25, I think, when I started my first company, which is, I don't no longer have at this time. I think we, and, um, I closed it, I don't know, a good five plus years ago. But was that, I the, was was that just, the chair company? Yeah, that was okay. the, the chair company. And, Got it. But that was the, the beginning of just everything, you know, and all, it's all, just all a mentality, you know, of just, um, wanting to be an entrepreneur, wanting to work for yourself. I remember just sitting at my desk working for a company, just not happy, you know. And those are the things that you start thinking about. I was like, dang, what's my next move? What's my next? How do I work for myself? How do I work for myself? And it's just a mentality, you know, of not everyone has it and not good or bad for not to say one way is better than the other. It's just whatever works for that particular individual, you know. But um, so I started that chair company, I think I was 25, had just gotten married, I think at 24. My oldest son, Tyler, was about to be born, I don't know, sometime shortly after that. And then I got laid off. I was kind of forced, I don't want to say forced, but it was an opportunity. So I got laid off in that, and then I um, started my new my company at the time. Um, and it was just a transition, you know, and I was now able to work for myself how to get on the grind. And I think starting that company, I think I was also working in one or two other jobs. Uh, one was portable restrooms, as you mentioned. Uh, and then the other one, I was actually got a part-time job at White Memorial Hospital. That's right. Yeah, and I, right. was, I was, because the baby was about to be born, and, and like, I, I just need insurance, <laughs> I need whatever, you know. I go just, straight to the hospital. Dude. I, need, so. I had bills to pay, you know, and, um, I was just on the grind, you know? Yeah. And I haven't worked for anybody as an employee since then, you know? Um, so it's been, it's been interesting to say the least, you know? So, so you started, you, I mean, that's pretty, it's, it's admirable. Um, so we obviously gone, we've done a ton of events. Um, one that stands out obviously for me is the, the Latin Grammy Street Festival. <laughs> Um, because I was picking up trash and you were escorting artists. So mm -hmm. it was one of those things I was like, I want to get to where you were at, um, just as a homie. Um, but take us through that because I think this was, uh, what was it, 2009, 2010? Mm -hmm. You're working for a company, All Access. They were like the premier Latino marketing, branding, mm -hmm. event company in LA. Um, a lot of our friends today came from that company, which is you, you know, Mitchell, Julio, a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Um, Juan, Iona, Johnny, all these people, right? Um, but take us from there to how you guys started your company. How, how did that play out? Yeah, um, so I was working as a freelancer, a contractor as a, um, in the event industry. One of many of my jobs that I had because I was still trying to pay bills and raise a family. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was working as a contractor for a company called All Access Entertainment, you know who they are, and that's how I met Julio. Julio was working with them, I think, as a full-time event producer, and um, I had an opportunity to work with him, and him and I were basically just um, working with each other on different projects. Um, and then, I don't know, uh, maybe a year or so went by, um, and he decided he, he had left the company, um, shortly after and I was just a contractor I wasn't I wasn't an employee or anything like that and he hit me up one day he's like hey what do you think about maybe starting our own company you know let's do our own thing um, and uh, 
he, he came up with the name for it and we went walking downtown LA one day and um, started looking, looking for office space. You know, we didn't know, like, we knew where we wanted to do, we just didn't know how we were going to do it, so we just did it, you know, and everything else just began to fall in place. Correct you know? me if I'm wrong, you guys started off as like a permitting company, right? Like you guys are starting in the permitting realm? No, 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 we, we still started off in events? In event production okay. and permitting is something that we just added to it, but he hit me up, and I was kind of hesitant, I wasn't sure, you know, what I was going to do with my life or my career at that right. point, you know, I was still just trying to hustle and grind and make ends meet, and um, so I said, let me get back to you. And then when I got back to him, he was like, let's just do it. We started it in his one bedroom apartment in Santa Monica and yeah. in the kitchen, pulled up the computer and did all the paperwork through, um, that we needed to do and form the company. And then um, we were just walking in. We, we, wanted, we were trying to find an office space. Um, this was back in 2009 in downtown LA. And back then it was, um, it was pretty dormant like it was like ghost town you know no one was like why are you going to downtown yeah. you know get out of downtown um, the sun goes down so we went to downtown and walked around i think we saw a good dozen or so offices and uh, we found one we landed on it and we ended up signing a lease for a year and didn't have a single client in our pocket you know we were just like let's just figure this thing out um you know we're both just on the grind we're just hustling you know um and then we just begin to work hard and and um, we just celebrated I think 11 years back in November in the middle of the pandemic <laughs> I mean that that leads into that leads into the, the present right yeah. like so you guys did your 10 years right yeah. it sounds like a like a term like yeah, it's like a it's like a work marriage yeah, yeah. so you guys did your 10 years you step into uh, 20 2020 mm-hmm what was it going like into 2020? What was what was the plan? 2020 like? was going to actually probably be our best year yet, like our biggest year, revenue wise, events wise. Um, I was exploring. You know, you've been to our offices in downtown. We're kind of outgrowing it a little bit, and I was exploring just uh, bigger office space and looking at different options for us to kind of grow into. Um, and then I'm glad we didn't, but. Um, Julio kind of wanted to pump the brakes a little bit on moving into this new office space and I'm glad he did you know talked me out of it um, so what we did is we reinvested some money into our existing office remodeled it you know dumped some cash into it and it wasn't what shortly a couple weeks later we had to shut yeah, down yeah. you know and then in of October I mean we haven't been going in the office but a few times since March so in October we just decided to close the office yeah. you know um, and everyone's just been working from home, you know, and during that time, <clears throat> um, you know, it's a very quiet time, not a whole lot of stuff going on, you Reflective, know, I bet. gives you some time to reflect on your personal life, business life, um, cause we're so, I mean, you know, when you're in the event industry, you're just probably just in life in general, you're just always on the, on the hustle and the grind and you always got deadlines and projects and you don't have time to sit back and think, you know, you want to, you want to, you want to, you know, have every intention to want to think and brainstorm and start thinking about the future, but you're just so caught up in, in the day to day that you don't have time to do it, you know? And so, you know, for the past so many months, it just gave us time to kind of rethink things, you know, what's important to me, what's important to him, what's important just in life in general, you know? So, so what's important to Robert? Um, right now, it's just really making sure that I am mentally and physically healthy, you know, yeah. and then making sure that my, my boys, my family is mentally healthy, you know, and physically healthy. It's, with the pand pandemic going on with them, you know, at first being um, distance learning, you know, was freaking miserable, <laughs> you know. For and, you or for your boys? <laughs> I think for both, you know. Um, and I know we'll eventually get out of this phase, um, get back to some, some type of normalcy, but it's just, you go on a mental creative block, you know, and I, even them too, you know? Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure that they're mentally healthy, physically healthy and, um, and all of that. And I think that's it. Like, I think this past year was supposed to be a re building year you know just in general life and all that stuff and all of that came to a complete halt 
you know. And now I think this last year has been more of a sit back and that's actually just like um, enjoy the peace and quiet, yeah. reflect on it, soak it in, and then 2021 is going to be the rebuilding year. Well, you know, in general. In a sense, though, 2020 is a little bit of a rebuilding year because, you know, before you rebuild something, you, you, have, tear to, you have to tear it down. Yeah. And I think for all of us, including myself, has just been tearing down the things that I thought were important. Mm -hmm. And even reluctantly, I'm like, oh, I don't want to let go of that. You know, yeah. uh, dang, I, I missed that or yeah. I missed this. But it, it gave us a space to see, okay, where's, what do we value in life? Yeah, yeah. What, are, what are we, you talk about mental health. You know, I think for me, it's been huge. Mental health this year, it's been huge, you know, and it's a struggle. It's a fight. Mm -hmm. um, because being indoors all day long will, you know, drive you, <laughs> drive you yeah, crazy. Yeah. So it is a little bit of a rebuilding this year. 2021 might be a rebuilding of a, of a let's start over again. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start somewhere. So, you know, you went through all these years, you know, your faith journey growing up, your years with Jive Live. Um, what is Rob heading into now? What is, what is you know, you, you got your career, you, you guys have been doing your thing. Two things. It's a two-folded question. Where is Rob in his career? Where, what is he heading into? Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing is, who is Robert now? Mm-hmm. Well, that's the first question. Um, so going back to Jive Live, me and Julio, you know, we just, him and I just had a heart to heart and said, hey, what do you want to do? You know, for the last couple of years, we came to a place in our business and our company where we're just both, I mean, for the short of it, we're just bored, you know, because we've been doing all this stuff over and over and over again. And it was like, cut it, was, and paste. it was easy. It was cut and paste, yeah. you know, and we just been looking for the next challenge and you know, and then we pick up new work and we just get back in the routine again and we don't deal with the root of the issue where it's just like, all right, what's next, you know? And I've explored, you know, whether if it's real estate, I went and got my real estate license um, once <laughs> and back in March when um, the pandemic hit and everything got shut down. Well, I had nothing but time on my hands. Yeah, I, I had a question. I was like, what, you, what is he doing? And then <clears throat> I went six and months my, later, you got a license. <laughs> I got my real estate license. <laughs> Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's yeah. something that I've been wanting to do for a while just to have and for personal reasons and all that. But um, what was I saying? You're just talking about your, 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 your journey with Julio and just giving you Yeah, some. so we were just at a place to where we're just like, all right, we need something next. Like we need a, the next challenge in our lives, you know, in our business and then in our personal life, you know, and Julio has been um, uh, working on him on what he's been wanting to do personally and in business wise and we basically just had a heart to heart and said hey where are you at what do you want to do you know and um we just had to come into jesus moment and saying you know what this is probably the time for us to kind of go do our own thing you know yeah there's not a whole lot of events going on you know so there's no excuse that hey we're too busy but so we just over lunch one day and said hey, you know what i've been thinking the same thing i think it was at first it was like crap what's he gonna think you know this is all the stuff i'm it's thinking your brother. about it's your brother what's yeah, he gonna think you know and i think both of us in our own little our own little mind trips were like hey we didn't we don't want to disappoint the other person or what he's going to be upset or whatever like that when we, when we talk about it but we're the fact that we're both thinking about it in our own way came together and, and basically i said what he was going to say and he said what i was going to say and we're just like this is the right time you yeah. know and last couple months, we've been working on the transition and stuff. Julio will continue with um, Jive Live Entertainment. Um, we'll continue to work with each other on different projects. Yeah. But I think it was time for him to run his own company. You know, him and I have been running Jive Live Entertainment together for a little over a decade. And um, he just needed to do it, you know. Yeah. That said, um, I'll be launching Boombox Entertainment in the next couple of weeks. It's not, Congrats. I haven't, haven't made it public or anything yet. Um, yeah, this will probably air after you make it public. <laughs> <laughs> but um, going through this, going through this, this phase um, or just this transa transition, um, 
it, it was different. It was weird because him and I always been able to bounce ideas off each other. Hey, what do you think about this? Hey, do we think about that? You know, um, as opposed to now, um, good and bad. It's like now I get to make the final decision. The you know the decision stops with me. But you also don't have that yin and yang to bounce it off of. But it's a, it's a good thing. I, it's, I like the energy behind it because yeah. it's like you're taking you're going back and now taking the risk again. You know, it's a risk. Um, you don't you you literally don't have say your brother um, checking your blind spots. Yeah. You know and. You know, how do you learn business? You either fall on your face, sink or swim, yeah. really. You know what I mean? It was cool. I was watching this, the movie The Chef last night again. I mean, I've seen it a million times. <laughs> but it's not, I, I, it kind of just made me rethink a little bit, too. Just kind of like, or made me remember just the, um, the thought process behind what I'm doing and what Julio's doing, or just in general of this next, this next phase in my life. Um, but like that movie, it's not just about a cooking movie and cooking good food. Like before he left the restaurant and he went and started his own his own food truck, um, you can it was the energy that and the mentality that he had was night and day, black and white. You know, when he got his food truck and it was a dump of which food truck, and then he was like, "All right, I'm gonna gut this out, got it rebranded," and just the passion that he had for it. It's like I haven't had that in years. You know, yeah, that fire. I haven't had that in years. Granted, I don't wake up in the morning like crap. I have to go to work. No, I enjoy what I do. I, I would, I enjoy what I did. You know, and all the, the the products that we're working on. I never considered what we were doing actual work, but it's like, it's missing something. You know, and it was it hit me last night watching this movie. It's like uh, that's what it's missing. Yeah, you know, yeah. passionate about it, fearless about it. If you fall on your face, you fall on your face. Who yeah. cares? You know. Um, and it's like, that's what you need. Yeah. You know, you need that passion, you need that drive and you need that energy. And, and until, if you don't have that, then you, you, you know, you're just, you're just fighting yourself. Yeah. You know, you're just balancing, you're, you're just, you know, I'm not going to say you won't succeed. It's just like, you're going to be missing something, yeah. you know? And I was like, I need that again, yeah. you know, from starting new projects over and again, you know? And, um, so I've been working on Boombox Entertainment for the last several weeks. Um, all the branding's done, the website's done. Um, so this will be coming out soon. Um, and who knows what's going to happen with it? I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict 2021. I don't know. We what's couldn't predict happen. 2020 for sure. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen with live events. Um, but I'll be ready to go once they do come back. Yeah. Um, and from there, I don't. You know, who knows? You know. Um, I'm not afraid of hard work, you know, I'm not afraid to, to try something new and try something different. Um, going back to just the way I was brought up, you know, my, my parents are both entrepreneurs and, um, my mom doesn't even have a high school diploma, I don't think, you know, and my dad, um, you know, he did some schooling and stuff like that in his profession, but it was just a mentality that um, I was brought up with, you know. I yeah. learned how to do accounting and QuickBooks through my mom, you know. So it's just, um, that's it, you know. And then, God bless our mothers, man. So, yeah. For sure. Working well, on a new tattoo right now for see, my mom. <laughs> my mom keeps bugging me and asking, she's like, when are you going to get a tattoo with me? I'm like, nah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, last, last, last question. Life advice. If you had, if you had to give life advice to the audience, what would it be? It's a loaded question, but what what would it be? I mean, uh, you can answer that in so many different ways. I guess for me, though, personally, just be you. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think that a lot of people go their entire lives living for someone who they're not even who they're not even who they're not. You know. Um, and just being who you are and genuine to yourself um, and not giving a F about what other people think yeah. about you, who, who, you, who they think you should be, how, you, how, how they think you should act or um, whatever it is. It's like, just be you, you yeah. know? Um, you know, prior to all of this, you and I were talking, um, just about uh, uh, 
that whole the Dave Letterman Netflix series and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And I've been I watched it, and there's a lot of good episodes on it. And I was just seeing. I had already had a perception of people, whether well, it was I think the Dave Chappelle one, Obama one. Um, I already have a perception of who I thought they were, you know, and sitting there listening to them, and it's like they're just people, you know, yeah. same issues that we're dealing with, you know, and just on a different level, you yeah. know, they're just they're just more in the spotlight, you know, and after one of those episodes, I kid you not. I had a conversation with my oldest boy, Tyler, and I just sat him down. And I just, because this is the stuff that I was thinking about in my own life, was just like growing up in church for, since I was 20, last 20, oh, 20 so years, years. Yeah. I had this mentality. Um, and it, for me, it wasn't healthy. You know, now that I think about it, you know, looking from the outside in, yeah. it wasn't a healthy mentality. And then, so I, I, I purposely wanted to sit down and have this conversation with Tyler because he's growing up. He's 14 now. You know, he's, he's developed his own personality, his own um, just who he is in life. And, and he's going to church. He's serving God. And he's involved with music and playing the guitar and all that stuff. But um, something I wanted to make sure he understood was just there's so many different people and lifestyles and perception of um, politics and whether you're on the left side or the right side and there's different lifestyles that are people are living in and, and I was just telling him it was like you just one you just got to be you you know two you may not ever agree with somebody because of what they how they live their life or how they were brought up or who they voted for or whatever, whatever. You just, you're not going to agree with everybody. However, the only thing I did ask of him is just respect them. You know, they're just people, you know, you may disagree about something, but in the, the day, they're just people. Just love them. Yeah. You just respect them, you know, and it's crazy as we went through this whole voting thing, you know, and how much division that brought this country you know and um i mean i had to stop watching the news after a while and it's crazy how you can have <laughs> a conversation with somebody who doesn't agree or disagree just doesn't agree with you on your views of what politics and and um going through those conversations um it's like do you really like are we are we not friends anymore? Like yeah. like you can have a different opinion about anything. Let's talk about it and then let's move on. Let's go have a cup of coffee or yeah. whatever and yeah. let's just move on. It's like we're all if all of us thought the same and lived the same and it's like this place wouldn't this place would be boring as hell. <laughs> be a bunch of robots, yeah. And it's just like I was going back to Tyler, it's just like, like let like the world is so much bigger than the four walls of our church, you know? And so much bigger than just um, that that mindset, you know. Yeah. Um, and there's different people, there's different lifestyles, there's just different personalities, different beliefs, you yeah. know. Yeah. People who serve different gods, people who don't even believe there is a god, you know. And there's a good friend of mine, I'm saying a good friend of mine, but someone who I know who is an atheist, you know. But he's like... Like, one of the, like, I enjoy talking with this guy, yeah. you know, and he's a great guy, you know. I met his family, his wife, and they're just great all-around people. I'm not going to sit here and beat him over the head just because he doesn't believe in God, and he's going to beat me over the head just because I do believe there's a God, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like like having a good conversation, mutually respecting each other. But that know? goes back to your point. It really is being yourself. Yeah. They are there being themselves. Correct. You're being yourself. And what I'm hearing is that now that you, you're, you're, I don't say championing, but you're instilling that in your boys. It's to be yourself, but to treat people, what I heard was treat people with respect and love. Regardless of yeah. what their beliefs or background or whatever, who they are, how yeah. they live, it's just like, otherwise you're just going to be stuck in this bubble and um, not, you'll be naive yeah. about what else is going on in the world, yeah. you know around you you know yeah 
And if you can't understand what's going on, if you can't understand what else is going on around the world in the world around you, how can you help the world around you or yeah. the community around you? Yeah. You, you gotta know? you gotta be connected to the community. Because you're so locked into this mindset or this bubble of whatever you think you should be doing, yeah. you know. But in all reality you're missing the point yeah. of one who God is, if you believe there's a God, you know. Um, ministry and what that is, you know, community society because we're so focused on just the I got to do this I got to do this I got to do this you miss the you miss the whole point you know well I'm gonna say this I am glad that you're not missing the point (laughs) Um, but it's beautiful to see uh, I mean to spend what the better part of 45 minutes talking to you um, learning a little bit more about your upbringing. I mean, we've been friends for close to 20 years, if not 20 years now. Uh-huh. Um, and I don't think I've ever asked you about living in a car or, you know, the trajectory up to Seattle. Um, we've actually, weirdly, we've gotten close in the last couple of years um, with having kids and mm-hmm. being now entrepreneurs and business owners and whatnot. And um, I just want to say I'm thankful for you as my brother. Um, and just keep going, man. Keep going. Yeah. And, and you have our support here at Gray LB. Well, um, it's got some new ink on your it's arm. It's got some new ink on my arm, you know, in, in memory of uh, my buddy Ron, yeah. um, DJ Effecto. So, um, yeah, man, thank you. <laughs> but uh, definitely, we appreciate you um, joining us today and being our guest. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. Um, and we will continue to support Boombox Entertainment once you makes that, make that announcement. Yeah. We will continue to support Julio and Jive Live yeah. Entertainment. Um, and even, you know, even the people around us and whatever 2021 holds. But uh, thank you again, guest uh, Robert Larmore. Thank you so much.